Oh, praise God. Let's get some worship going. Praise God. What a great God we serve. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We bless your holy name. <laughs> yes, God. Oh, there's nobody like you. There's nobody higher, nobody bigger, nobody better, nobody greater than our God. And his name is Jesus. And you've been so good to us. And we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. What a mighty, matchless, holy, great God we serve. Come on. His name is Jesus. Oh, just like this song saying, we're not going nowhere. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, we ain't got nowhere to go to. For you hold the eternal life. You hold the, you hold the gift of life, God. We're coming toward you. There ain't nothing greater than this. This is that. And there is no other. So we're, it, we're here. We're in it to win it. And we love it. And we're going to keep going forward. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. What a holy great God we serve. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we exalt you. We adore you. We honor you. We magnify you. We bless your name. You've been so good to us. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Speak to us in this place, God. Speak to us wherever we're at. Even if we're driving down the road, God, or wherever we're at, we might have a little bit of time, but God, let us tune in with the time that we got and receive what you got for us, Father, and bring us back to whenever we got more time, God, and do some great things, Father, and make us thankful and grateful, Father, and just keep speaking to us and just keep working on us and keep showing us what you got for us. Many great things, God. You're there for us, Father. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. You're there sticking closer to us than a brother, mother, sister, father, whoever. Glory to God. We're going to proclaim your name, God. Because through all these things that's going on, you're still on the throne. You're still in control. And since we know that that's the fact, we're going to get close to you so that we know when we have you in us and on our side that everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. So that's why we lift you up, God. We talk to you, God. We connect with you. <laughs> because our problems, our bigger and better problems ain't greater than God. <laughs> so we're going to talk about you, God. We're going to magnify your holy name. We're going to lift you up. We're going to worship you. We're going to exalt you. We're going to adore you. We're going to honor you, God. Why? Because you're worthy of the highest praise. Why? Because you're most high. Why? Because you're in control. Why? Because you did so many great things to us, for us. Why? Because you woke us up this morning, God. Oh, praise God. We didn't have to be here today, God. So many people, they don't wake up the next morning, but we're alive today right now. So we might as well be thankful. We might as well be grateful for the day that you've given us. Today is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to speak of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, God, you've been doing great things, God. <laughs> you've been doing great things, God. So we're going to talk about you. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We just start lifting you up, God, till miracles take place, till things change, till there's a shift in the atmosphere, till... We might have had a bad day, might have just had something go on, going on, God. But then next thing you know, God comes through and sweeps those problems away. Because when we compare our problems to a mighty God, those problems melt away. Those problems aren't problems compared to a mighty God. For I reckon that the things that are on this earth are nothing compared to what God's got stored for us in heaven. So yeah, we're going at it. We're going to be living for God. We're going to be talking about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because He, we could have fell out. We could have gave up. We could have quit. We could have fainted. But we didn't because God is alive. And the reason why God is alive, it gives us this reason to talk about Him. To talk about the goodness of the Lord because He's been too good for us. He's been too good for us. God.
God, we bless you. God, we were created to do this. In Ecclesiastes, God, Solomon, he said, the whole purpose of man is to live for God. To live for God. And that's what we're doing. We're going to live for God. We choose to talk about the goodness of the Lord. We choose to put forth the kingdom of God. And we choose to bless the name of the Lord. Why? Because he's real. Because he's on a throne. Because he's making a difference. Because he, uh, the goodness of God leads all men to repentance. God, you've been so good to us. Many people could have died. But yes, you look down. And before they died, it was no one never died off of your watch. God, you're always watching. You know what's going on. You're in control. So when things are going on, you look. And you say, and, 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 and you keep people from dying. You look out for people. The reason why so many people could have died and they got those those testimonies. They testify all the time. They talk about it. Maybe they made me they, they maybe they don't give you the glory like they should, but they should. Why? Because you're in control, God. Like I said, I'm gonna say it a thousand times. You're in control, God, and you're doing great things. You changed my life, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. So I'm gonna speak it. I'm telling y'all that God is amazing. God is great. God is great. God, I ask you to lead me, God. Lead me in this Bible study, God. I pray that you touch people's lives. The amount of time that they're on here, God, I pray that you speak to their hearts. Speak to all of us and give us what you got for us, God, because you got something for us all. No one is left out when it comes to the kingdom of God. We all got something that we, uh, a, a part that we got to play. And, 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 and we're, it's all according to God. It's all up to God. It's all, it's all up to us connecting with God. Because we can look around in, in other places and find satisfaction in other places. But these types of fat, satisfaction, they don't, they don't, they don't come, they don't satisfy us continuously. But we're going to be empty. We're going to be void. And we're going to keep on looking and looking and looking and looking and looking. Why? Because until we look to Christ, there's always going to be something bigger. Why? Because God is the biggest thing we could ever look for. So once we look in God's direction, we can finally say this is that and there is no other. There ain't nothing greater than this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here this long. I wouldn't be living for God as long as I did. If I didn't believe that be the truth, I wouldn't have gave up all the things that I gave up. If I didn't see how great of a truth it was, how God, how real God was, I wouldn't have gave it up. No, I had some things going for me and I wouldn't have gave it up because I had some, some things that I thought was cool. I thought was good, whatever you want to call it. I, I had some things going for me. And, but it was, a, it was, it was, it was, it was against what I'm doing now. So I had to make that decision. But when I seen the goodness of the Lord, woo, when I seen God's mercy, his grace, his favor shining upon me, when I found out that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me, while I was rubbing his name in the ground, Christ died for me, while I was doing him dirty, Christ still said, I love you, boy. I'm going to pull you out your problems. I still care for you, boy. I'm still going to take care of you. I still show you that I love you, boy. And then next thing you know, I had to get up. I had to jump up. I had to stand up and proclaim the good, good news of the Lord. I had to talk about the goodness of the Lord. It was too good. It's too, he's been too good to me to not say anything. I'm going to say something about the Lord. I'm going to talk about the name that's above every name. Yeah, a lot of people like to talk what they're good at. They're good at this. They're good at that. Good at that. But I'm going to talk about the, the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to be good at talking about the goodness of the Lord. That's what I'm going to be good at. Why? Because there ain't nothing greater than it. There ain't nothing greater than it. So I'm going to keep on speaking God's name. God, let your will be done. Let your truth reign. Let your truth reign in my family, in the people that's watching, in, what, in, in, in our lives, God. Father, have your way. Speak to us. Give us what you got for us. Work in us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all pray with me. Mm. Hallelujah. 
What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I pray, God, that you speak to us in this, this particular Bible study, God. Speak to us. We don't have to reach in our past and grab an old victory, an old miracle. Nah. God, we serve a God that's a God of the now. We serve a God that's a God of the now. Woo! He's a God of the now. So whatever we need, we can bring it before him right now. We can put our problems right before him. We don't have to talk to the priest like they did in the Old Testament, but we can come boldly before the throne of grace and receive this favor of God at a time of need. We got, look, let me tell you what God does. Let me tell you what God does. This is what God does right here. God, he pulls out his wallet. And when you need some mercy from God, he pulls out his wallet and he ain't like one of these fathers on the earth. He ain't like a, like a, like a, like a, uh, one of us that, that if you, if you got, to, if you had a, you know, you had a short days uh, of pay or whatever, short, short week of pay and you look in your wallet and your son comes up to you, your daughter comes up to you and says, dad, uh, uh, I want to buy a toy. And you open up your wallet, you start looking in and you only got a $20 bill and a $1 bill. And then you, and you're like, look. Look, son, all I got is a 20 and a one. And you know I ain't going to be able to give you the 20. So you're going to have to make do with this $1 bill. Well, see, God's a little different than that. When God pulls out his wallet of mercy, starts flipping through his money, he says, you tell me when you want me to stop. That's what God says. Tell me when you want me to stop. And then whatever amount of mercy you need, I got it for you. I got the mercy that you need. I got it for you. That's what God's saying. And I, I say that. All the time, but I'm, I'm, that's how real it is. God is so merciful. It said his, he, his, his mercy is as high as the heavens. His mercy. And then when we go to sleep and we might have had a bad day and we might have felt bad and we might have went through some things. We might have did something wrong. We might have uh, uh, should have held our tongue during a situation, but we didn't. And we wish that we would have, but we didn't. And, and, and so we might have been a little disappointed when we went to bed. We might have prayed before we went to bed because we should. But we might have been a little disappointed when we went to bed. Then we woke up. We might have felt that same way, but we don't have to wake up in condemnation. We don't have to wake up feeling bad. Why? Because the Bible says that every morning, fresh and new mercy awaits us. Every morning, we can wake up to some fresh and new mercy so that we don't have to hang our head down low, but we can look up and square our shoulders with a smile on our face because God is taking care of it all. He is in control when he's doing great things. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that being said. And I appreciate every one of you that's on here. Whatever time you, you, you know what I'm saying? There, you know what I'm saying? Whatever time you're on here, I appreciate the time that, you know, you take and, and, and come on here and uh, enjoy this Bible study with me. Um, I'm thankful for what God's doing. He's doing things. I don't, I wouldn't have it no other way. Um, um, you know, and, and so I'm looking around and I see what God's doing and I'm like, man, I, I might as well go ahead and go all out for God. Why not? So that's what I'm doing. I choose to live for God and I want to encourage others to do the same thing. And so it don't matter where you're at. You don't matter what you did. It don't matter who you are, where you're from or nothing. Cause God can work with anybody cause that's how he did it in the Bible. And if you don't believe so, you haven't read the Bible enough because God is, is, is a God of, of not just second chances, but a God of many chances. So all we got to do is just ask God to forgive us of anything that we did. And there you go. He's back. We're back connected with God and, 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 and we can start talking to God. And when we're a child of God, it's, it's not the same as a servant of God. Now, I know we use the term servant and technically uh, uh, we are a servant. But on the flip side, we're a child of God. We're children of the most high, true and living God, God, which means that, um, you know, just like a king, if you if, if if like a servant don't know what the king's going to do, but now a child of the king, he can sit beside the king. and The king will tell him all of the secrets of what the king's going to do. Yeah. So same thing with us and God. God reveals the deep mysteries to us. Now, he don't leave us hanging, but he fills us in. He fills us in. He speaks to us. He shows us what we need to know. 
He's not going to leave us down. He's not going to leave us hanging. I mean, even to the, well, I don't want to go overboard, but I'm just saying, even to the point that, that, um, there's people that, and, and I've, I might've said this before, but there's people that, um, that, that, that's died and maybe, maybe they died young, but they served God. And you might for a split second or however long you might be thinking, man, why did they die if they were serving God and they were doing good and they had a ministry and they had family and why did they die? Man, I, I can't imagine the pain they felt before they, uh, you know, exited out of this. No, no, that's, that's not the case. That's not the case. See, the thing about it is God prepares people. If it's our time to go and we're living for God, we're going to be okay. It's like walking through one, through the room you're in right now into the next room. And you're in heaven and you're okay. And, and you ain't going to want to go back. You ain't going to want to turn back to earth once you're in heaven. We might've heard that, but it's true because the Bible says that we can't even imagine the things that he's got prepared for us. That means we can use our wildest imagination and start thinking about all these things that God would do and have for us in heaven. And it don't even scratch the surface at what God's got in store for us. So come on, somebody, let's Think about what God's got in store. We might not be going in, going, we might not have, we might, we might not have what we want. We might not have everything, but, but, but because we got God, everything's going to be all right. God's going to take care of us. You might've been asking God to do something for you. And I want to tell you, keep on asking. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. <laughs> Don't quit asking God. Because the next thing you know, you're going to turn around and that thing that you was asking God, it's going to happen. It's going to take place. It's going to take place. Praise God. Man, I'm excited. I'm, I'm thankful. I, I, you know, I just start thinking about what God's doing, what he has done, what he is doing, what he's going to be doing. And it, and, and it just gets me excited. See, the thing about it is. The thing about it is there's a lot of people that I see. See. I've seen people. I've I've seen people get healed. I've heard of people get healed, and you know I might have not seen somebody get out of a wheelchair, but I've heard of people that told me stories of people getting out of a wheelchair, and 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 I know that they're real people. I know I know that these are real people. So with that being said, it's like I prayed for that same. It's it's like it's like I was there with them when that took place. Why? Because I choose to believe that it really happened. Even though I wasn't there, it happened. And the Bible, the things that happened in the Bible, <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I believe it. So I choose to believe it. And it's and, 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 and it's just, oh man, it's just adding to my faith. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or hearing by the preaching word of God. So by you hearing the word, by you hearing the words that I'm saying right now, it's at, faith is being added to you right now. Right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. God is great and he's doing awesome things. And so we might as well talk about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Praise God. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you see my post that I posted right before this post on my Facebook page, you'll see that um, I have all of the pictures of the studying that I'm going to be doing tonight on there. I'm going to be talking about four four different um uh pages of, of, of topics tonight so we're gonna go ahead and get started um so uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and get started right now and whoo man i love god i love what he's doing <laughs> and i'm thankful so praise god all right so we're starting off with john the baptist paves the way so we're gonna talk a little bit about john the baptist i'm not trying to i'm gonna not try to hold y'all too long I'm trying to smoothly go through this and uh, just kind of hit some highlights. And um, and I appreciate all of y'all that's on, on here. All right. So John the Baptist paves the way. Um, and he, he basically paves the way for the for the kingdom of God. So we know that John the Baptist was um, was was uh, basically a few months born a few months before Jesus. And when when um, the angel revealed to Mary that she was going to have be born with a child, the, the holy child, Jesus, um, basically, 
she told she went and told Elizabeth that was having John and, and like I said John was born a few months before Jesus she told Elizabeth and it said that John the Baptist inside of when he was a baby inside of the womb of uh Elizabeth said he leaped for joy when when he heard the salutation of 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 Jesus being you know born of Mary so so, uh, and you know, John the Baptist, he was sent of God. So we know he was sent of God. And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of touch a few things on here. Uh, John the Baptist was sent of God. Now, even though he was sent of God, and, and I'm just kind of just going in, 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 in different directions on this, but uh, I'm talking about John the Baptist. But um, even though he was sent of God, he, um, he had his, 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 his doubts. So even if there's a man that was sent of God that had his doubts, that means we shouldn't let Satan accuse us and be like, you're doubting right now. Yeah, yeah, God ain't, nah, you should be ashamed of yourself self for doubting. See, that's how Satan does. He tries to twist things. Sometimes it's just ourselves. And we need to, we need to educate ourselves and say, no, God's for us. No, we will beat our problems. No, we will proclaim the name of the Lord. No, we are confident. Oh, and we ain't just confident as in conceited. No, we're confident because we got God on our sides. When we got God on our side, yeah, we can be confident. We can look our head high and 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 be thankful toward God. So so um even John doubted. He had his doubts because even though he was sent of God, and even when he seen Jesus, you know, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And 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 all of this, and and I'm gonna be going back and forth on this, but uh, so you, I'm, I'm gonna be backstepping myself, but I wanted to throw this out here right now. But when John was put in prison, right before he was beheaded, when he was put in prison, he um basically he sent some servants to um Jesus and said, ask basically asked Jesus, are you he that comes or do we look for another that's what he asked jesus and jesus told those servants said go back and tell john the baptist that the the the, the lame walk the blind see the deaf hear the the dead is raised back to life again all these miracles he, he said go remind him of the miracles that i'm doing go talk about the miracles and 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 the cool thing about it was when the servants came he literally was just done just doing some of these miracles right then and there so they, they it, it wasn't like uh he just give, take my word no nah, they literally seen his miracles right then and there doing these things so they they came back with a good report hey man john boy john why'd you ask that man why'd you ask about about jesus he over here praying for people with left and right man people anybody coming over to jesus side they got a problem they they, they, they leaving jesus without that problem so so it, it encouraged john you know what else i want to say this on the flip side and i believe this i believe i'm in the holy ghost on this john the baptist he got his head cut off and and the thing about it is I believe that all of this, I believe that, um, all of this, uh, this, 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 you know, these servants coming back and telling him what Jesus did, it encouraged him right before he did that. And see, God wouldn't make someone go through that unless it was the perfect person. God, J John knew, I guarantee you, John knew without a doubt, John knew that he was going to go through death. I, I guarantee you God revealed that to him. So he didn't. So basically, you know, um, um, you know, God had that. That was part of his life. He was like, man, this is what I got to do. Just like Paul. He knew he was going to die. He even said he was. I'm going to die. And and even even um, some of the people. And now I'm talking about Paul for a second. But some of the people, they were like, they were like, Paul, if you if you if you if you don't stop doing what you're doing, because he was he was wanting to witness to these uh, 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 to the, to, to the different Kings and get up in there and trying to, you know, show them the truth of Jesus. But at the same time, the Jews were trying to kill him. Um, basically. And, and that was ultimately the reason, you know, the Jews that they, they were trying to kill him, just like they, they, they got rid of Jesus because, you know, him preaching Jesus. And, um, 
really he could have got away with it because he was a he was a he was a he 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 originally was a Pharisee, but he didn't he wasn't trying to do his own thing. No, he 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 got changed by God in Damascus. He seen Jesus, and after that he was changed. And so he 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 uh he was preaching Jesus, and and he knew what I'm getting to is he knew that he was going to die. So this one of the one of the people that was filled with a you know one of the Holy Ghost filled believers they came up to him and they said John I mean Paul they said Paul, so they 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 winded up tying themselves with a a, a belt around their arms and their legs and they said this is what's going to happen to you the Holy Ghost showed me. You're going to be bound if you keep doing what you're doing. And Paul said, I know that. I, and he said, I not only know that I'm going to be bound like that, but I also know that I'm going to die for the sake of Christ. And so um, um, he already knew. And so you might be like, man, why do you have to go through that? Because, um, because Jesus had this little relationship with Paul, hit this connection with Paul and, 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 he had it set up with Paul. Paul was ready. He was ready. He said he was. He was ready to do it. He was ready to do whatever. Matter of fact, he watched Stephen get killed, which was a, a martyr for Christ. And he was, that's when he was on the Pharisees team. And um, so, you know, uh, he, he was like, man, I, I could have died. I could have, I could have kept walking as a Pharisee and missed out on all this. So <laughs> if I lose, remember what he said in the Bible? He said, he said, uh, uh, to 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 uh to be abs to to be absent with the lord is is, is i'm trying to remember how i said it It says to die is gain and to be to be here you i'm, I'm focused on christ basically so so he's like man i'm I, he's like, either way i'm winning i'm I'm on the winning side if, I, if i'm if god wants to let me maybe you know what i'm saying live for a little while i'm gonna be walking with god and i'm winning and then but but tomorrow i'm dead hey i'm going to heaven boy and i'm gonna have a good have a great time so it's all good all the way around so that's how john was so it wasn't no sweat to him so let me get back on track i want to throw that out there real quick so john was a forerunner of jesus christ he kind of had him prepared he basically prepared uh, uh, uh jesus for jesus's entry like like um you know he 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 started getting well let me let me read this scripture real quick isaiah 40 verse 3 it said the voice of the hymn that crieth in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord make straight in the desert a highway for god now that's in isaiah 40 verse 3 so Isaiah prophesied of John and what he was going to, how he was sent of God to prepare and be as a forerunner, runner for Jesus. And so, um, basically, uh, um, he started getting, he started getting people mind saying, Hey, look, we're going to do this a little different y'all. Um, we're going to start, um, we're going to start, you know, we, we, you, well, I'm going to kind of pull y'all away from the ritualisms of the Jewish beliefs. I'm going to pull y'all away. We're going into a different direction now because under the new covenant, those ritualisms die because Christ died and 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 died and and he took those rituals ritualisms with him with him. And so um, he said, I'm going to point y'all into another direction. But in this direction, we're going to be going toward the direction of you need to be baptized in order to be forgiven of your sins. Part of being forgiven is repentance and baptism. They're, they're, they're not separate, but they're together. So both of them kind of work together as a full forgiveness because the baptism of water washes away your sins. Um, and then, of course, you have to repent and repent don't necessarily mean by itself forgiven you know uh, basically you asking god to you know it's not necessarily saying god's forgiving you of your sins uh or you asking god to forgive you of your sins but really repentance is really just um is 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 basically saying you're doing a 180 from your old life to a new life in christ so um um so it's like kind of like an, an about phase so you, you, you turn around and go the opposite direction now it's not saying that you you ain't going to make mistakes you ain't going to fall down you ain't going to look back but, but but what what it is saying you're going to try your best to do the right thing and go toward the light and that's what you're going to be doing um so this is what he had 
basically prepared before Jesus came on the scene. He was getting everyone prepared for this, uh, 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 Jesus for the baptism uh, of the, of the Holy Ghost for the, for it to be actually baptized too in, in Jesus' name. So he he started baptizing people, and and when he would baptize people, and 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 basically he would like, your sins are forgiven, and he would baptize them for for this their sins to be forgiven. Now keep in mind um, that when someone was baptized in um, like when John baptized someone. You know, um, that, that didn't mean they, they were baptized for good and they didn't have to be baptized again because, you know, really, ultimately it was going to be in the name of Jesus. And that was the baptism, the uh, ultimate, it was, so like I said, it was just a way of people start starting to open up to the idea of people going to be eventually and, and for good being baptized as a part of the salvation process. It's not, it's not just a work. As a matter of fact, it ain't no work. It's faith. It's faith. So, um, and when you have faith, you do things in response to faith, and it's not no work. All right. So, all right. Malachi three verse one says, "Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare. He shall prepare the way before me." So Malachi 3, 1, let me say it again. I had someone uh, calling me right then, but it said, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. So basically, um, that's that's again, that's in Malachi way before, just like Isaiah. I just read from Isaiah. And here's here's another one. Malachi prophesying again that God would send a messenger to prepare his way before him, which was John the Baptist. So. This wasn't just something that was done in a corner. Look, the whole Bible, it wasn't just something someone created. It wasn't something done in a corner, but this was something that the whole world knows about. Everybody, um, this is this is this is powerful right here. So, John prepared people for what we call baptism today. Um and you know, John, he was born in the priestly family of Aaron, but although he was born in the priestly family of Aaron, um, he, he would, he, he was, his, his, um, his ministry was in the wilderness. He, where he had a diet that consisted of locusts and wild honey. So, um, um, and he was a Nazarite. So, uh, he had long hair like Samson that was uncut. Um, and the religious leader leaders didn't like John. They didn't like John because, you know, he drew a big amount of people to him and, and basically, uh, the religious leaders, they were all about drawing people in. And because John uh, uh, taught this new idea of being baptized and stuff and was getting people prepared of the new dispensation of grace, they weren't the religious re leaders. They didn't like that. Just like they, they didn't like what Jesus did and they wanted to stop Jesus. And, and, and they thought they did, but it was uh, when, when he rose out of that tomb, they, they, they didn't know what to do because... You know, they, um, they, uh, they were even trying to pay off, um, some people and like, Hey, let's just say somebody stole the body and, and, uh, uh, because we don't want, we won't want, I want more people believing in this, this Jesus because they, they, they were afraid of Jesus. They were straight up afraid of Jesus because, you know, the Bible says, well, I'll talk about that in a second. I got that in, a, in another page. So I want to jump the gun right now, but, um, so Luke 3.16, it says, um, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to loose. He shall ba baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And, you know, we're talk that's talking about Christ Jesus. All right, I'm going to my next point. Y'all excuse me while I grab some water real quick. All right. So next point, what is repentance? A decision to turn from actions that lead to death. I was talking about this a little bit while ago. So it's like doing a 180 from your old life <clears throat> to a new life. I know we used to say 360. I'm going to do a complete 360 for God. Now that's not no, that's not doing, that's not, <laughs> that's turning back to your old life. But I, I, I'm glad that I caught on to that. <laughs> But anyways, throw a little, throw a little jokey joke in there real quick. But um, anyway, so 
this is a decision to turn from actions that lead to death. So, uh, um, so it's, it's a, in the N word, this is a change of mind. And you know, uh, the Bible, when it refers to mind, it's talking about your heart. Um, and then in then outward, it's like I said, it's a change of direction. And that's not saying that we're going to make mistakes. I, I say that all the time. We're, we, we're human. And, and I don't want to say that like a cliche or trying to, uh, 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 say any, saying that we got a license to sin because the Bible talks about that. But, but the thing is, we do, a, we, we do have, um, uh, what you call it, uh, and we have, we have an advocate, the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So when we make mistakes, if we can just, if we can, we realize that, that God's got our back, he'll forgive us. Then we can get back up and dust our, our, our knees off, dust our shoulders off, whatever, whatever part of our body got <laughs> dirty, whatever, um, uh, dust ourselves off and, 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 um, and basically go at it like never before. Um, uh, so, uh, the altar, it represents death, the sur surrender of self, uh, the blood. Basically, when we call upon God and confess our sins, Jesus' blood cleanses. Now, you got 1 John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All we got to do is confess to God. Hey, God, we, we, sometimes we just got to be honest. We just got to be honest. Hey, God, man, I messed up, man. I, 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 I know I messed up. I'm, I know I've been, I was talking about this earlier this week and, and I keep messing up doing the same thing and I wish I wouldn't, but because you're talking to God and being honest, he's going to help you in Philippians chapter two, verse 13. Um, it, it, it basically says, and I'm paraphrasing, but it says, God will help you to do his will. So if we know that God's helping us to do his will, come on, man, we got this. We got this. Now, now let me put a little bit of icing, uh, icing on top of the cake. Let me throw this in there too. In Romans, I want to say it's Romans, Romans 8, verse 32. I don't want to be wrong. Let me see if I can find this. Romans 8, 32. That's the, that's the one I think it is. Um, look, at, look this up in the Bible real quick. Romans 8, 32. I think it talks about... Uh, Let's see. Romans 8.32. Yep. It says, Romans 8.32. He that spared not his son, own son, but delivered him up for, uh, for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, you know, one trend. Well, one, um, you know, in one of the gospel, it talks about how, how shall he not freely give us the Holy Ghost. But why did it say all things right here? Because all things is all things. So whatever we need. God's got it for us. And because he died on the cross for us, because he died on the cross for us, he already did the big thing. He already did the main thing. So he wouldn't go that far and then let some little situation that you did keep you from making it to the kingdom of God. Yeah, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Believe it. You're going to make it. You love God. You're going to make it because when you love God, when you really love God, it's going to bring a change in your mind. It's going to bring an action, a change of action in your steps. Yeah, you're going to start doing things different. And you have been. And God's working on you. All right. So, um, and then so also a part of uh, uh, repentance is you're, you're, you're basically, um, you're, you're, you're basically entering into a covenant relationship with God. And you're like, God, I'm, 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 I'm all yours now. I promise. I'm promising to love you, to serve and obey you. And God's going to work with you. He'll work with us. Praise God. Cause you know, he even said it in the Bible, he said that he said, come so that I can come, come, come and reason with me. Come and reason with me. That's what God said. Come and reason with me. Why would such an almighty God reason with us? Because he's amazing. That's all I can say. He's amazing. He works with us. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet rubbing his name in the mud, rubbing his face in the mud by the things that we did, he still was there saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Come on, man. Come on, y'all. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Even I believe that even um, Judas Iscariot didn't have to die. I mean, didn't have to, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, he didn't have to kill himself like that. He just let, he, he let Satan and, and his, I guess his self get the best of him. 
he he didn't he he didn't um he couldn't get over he couldn't find repentance the bible says he couldn't find repentance because he he didn't believe god would forgive him but just like just like the bible says father forgive them for they know not what they do um that that was true i mean jesus really uh forgave him for uh crucifying him so you know he would have forgave judas iscariot and 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 you know the difference between Judas Iscariot and another person that messed up Peter. Let me tell you something about Peter. He um he denied Christ three times, and and uh it said that it said uh it said he, Peter he, uh, see Jesus even see what happened was um Jesus basically Jesus told Peter he said well. Let me let me step back for a second before I say that. Let me say this real quick. First, let me get to this point. Um, Jesus basically told them all that he was going to die. He had to die. And um, Peter was like, uh, you, you know, at one point, Peter was like, no, 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 you ain't going to die. And then that's when uh, Jesus rebuked him. And he said, get thee behind, behind me, Satan. Get thee hence, Satan. And so um now you know peter wasn't possessed by satan but he was just given place to the devil by saying something like that he wasn't really thinking through what uh, uh jesus was saying but um but basically uh peter was like well if you're gonna die they have to go get through me or uh, well I, I, well let me get to this other point this is the other point i'm trying to get to um he was like he was like um Oh, I'm trying to remember what it was he, he said. Um, think, 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 think. Um, so basically, uh, <laughs> I forgot what I, what topic I was on. Um, um, basically, it's all good. It's all good because, man, I, I want to get this out here, y'all. So y'all bear with me. Peter was basically, oh, yeah, yeah. So basically, I'm talking about denying Christ. Peter denied Christ and it was a difference between him and, 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 um, uh, who else was it? Uh, I was talking about, um, uh, Judas, Judas Iscariot. So you had Judas Iscariot and he couldn't find repentance, but Peter, he did the same thing. He said that, uh, he would never deny Christ. That's what I was getting to. He said he had never denied Christ, but then there you have it. Um, he's, he's over here. Uh, Christ even told him on top of that, he said, Christ told him, he said, uh, uh, before the cock crows, uh, three times, you're going to deny me. And, and Peter, Peter was like, no, I'll never deny you. Could you imagine what went in his head when he told Jesus after Jesus was being, uh, a cru while Jesus was being beat up and getting ready to be crucified, Peter denied Christ three times. And he's like, man. Could you imagine what was going on in his mind? He's like, man, I could have. I can't believe I did this. Jesus is over here. He just got crucified. I told him I wouldn't deny him. And here I am denying him. He's looking over there at me. And even though he ain't thinking the way I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I'm letting my Lord down right now. So he could have. He could have just gave up. He could have been like, he could have been like, uh, like Judas. I'll never be forgiven. I'll never, I never get over this. I'll never get over this hump. The the Bible says that G, it said Peter wept. It might have even said, I, I want to think, I think he said he wept bitterly. And, and so he said he wept bitterly. And, uh, even though he wept bitterly, you know, um, he found grace in God. He found strength. In God, somehow he remembered the words of Christ and, 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 and he said, no, nah, man, I don't care what I did for, I don't care what I feel that I did that was against my God. I know that he loves me. So I'm going to beat this. I'm not going to be down. I'm not going to go where Judas Iscariot went. Nah, I'm going to beat this. <laughs> it ain't going to pull me down. And the next thing you know, he's got the keys to the kingdom. Jesus said, I, I, I seen that you go, went through a lot of stuff. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. I seen you and you and you. All, I seen some of you people. 
all of you people that's watching this right now. Jesus, he's saying, I see what you're going, you're going through. I see what you're doing. And I'm, and, 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 and your victor, your, your, your blessings around the corner, your victory is on the way. It's coming. It's coming in Jesus name. Praise God. So, um, basically, uh, 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 so we're talking about repentance. What is repentance? And, um, I just said that first John one nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, so we also forsake the old things of our life. So we can't be doing things that's contrary to uh, the things of God. So we have to give up the things in our old life, but it, it, it's going to be good. One thing that's good is going to bring peace to our lives. I'm telling y'all, some people are like, man, I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't care about peace. If I can do this and I can do that, I don't, man, who who cares about peace? <laughs> I'm telling you, if you don't care about peace, you'd be lying. Because everybody, when they laid their head down at night, they, I, yeah, I, I, let me know how much type of peace you care about right then and there. Because, because when you're laying down at night, yeah, you can't go to sleep because of the things you're doing. You can't, you can't, you're tossing and turning, you can't get no sleep. You can't. You, 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 because when you lay down, you think about all the things you did and you're like, man, I can't, I can't do this. Or you're either like, man, I'm just going to ignore this. And then, so then you're just ignoring it and pushing it deeper and deeper and you're becoming bitter and bitter and, 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 and it's killing you slowly. So you have to wake up to the things of God and we need this peace because you can't enjoy nothing if you don't have peace. So might as well not even do it. Might as well get right with Christ. Why? Because if you ain't got peace, you ain't going to enjoy the stuff that you're doing in the first place. There's two types of pain in this life. There's the pain of regret and the pain of discipline. The pain of regret is when you decide to do something that you know you shouldn't be doing. And while you're doing it, you can't even enjoy it because you're thinking about what you should be doing. And so where's the where's the serenity in that? Where's the. Since, since, what's the, where, where, where's the, uh, the, 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 the high in that? It's taken away. So that's why the pain of discipline is better than the pain of regret. Praise God. So restitution, we can have a clear conscience when we come to God. Repentance is, is, is bringing about a clear conscience. It's restitution, being guilt free. Where you don't have to have no worries. Now, I'm not going to say we're we're exempt from everything, you know. But I'm saying that, I'm telling you, compared to people in the world, we, 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 yeah, we got it going. We got it going because we serve a great God. So, praise God. Um, And so, basically, making Jesus our Lord and Master is the basis for entering into this covenant with him. And it starts with repentance. All right, we're going to go to the next point, next page. This is uh, Jesus Christ, the hope of the world. Jesus Christ, the hope of the world. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about Jesus Christ, him coming on the scene and different things he did. And how he was establishing, uh, 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 basically, he came, wrote, God came, robed himself in flesh and, and died for us on Calvary so that we could have life and life more abundantly. Um, so while he was here, we had him for an example, like the Bible writes of his stories of him being on earth. And he came for an example so that we could follow. So before I get to it, I want to talk about the old te a few of the Old Testament prophecies. All right. Um, in Numbers 24, 17, it says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So there's one prophecy that that God was going to come and robe himself in flesh in Numbers 24, 17. Going, well, no, that, I, well, I said Numbers 24, 17, but that was actually Isaiah 7, 14. Sorry about that. Isaiah 7, 14, that was that one. Now the Numbers 24, 17 is this one. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him but not nigh, which, you know, not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. 
So there's another prophecy uh, in Numbers 24, 17 of, of Jesus coming on the scene even before he came many centuries before. Here's another prophecy, Micah 5, 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from of old, from everlasting. Now, there, there, there's two things that kind of stand out to me in that one. First of all, I want to point out that Micah, this was Micah prophesying of Christ's coming. And not only did Micah prophesy that Christ was going to come, but he also pinpoints that Christ is even going to be born. He's going to come out of Bethlehem. So he even talks about, even prophesying about the fact that he was born in Bethlehem. And, and here's the cool thing. Um, you know how uh, Mary, his mom, and, and Joseph fleed from, um, from um, um, uh, where was it, uh, Jerusalem. Fleed from, oh no, not Nazareth. He fleed from Nazareth because they were living in Nazareth. And that's when Herod, uh, I believe it was Herod, he wanted to kill, he wanted to kill all the babies that was two years old and, and down. Because he was afraid that he heard of this prophecy of Christ. And he's like, oh man, I don't want no one to take this, king, this, this crown off of my head. And he, that's the sad part. Why is he afraid of a baby? Here's another sad part. Why is he afraid? Why would, and here, why would if he didn't, because you might, you might be like, well, he, he, why would he be afraid? He don't believe in God anyways. Because if he believed in God, then he would be living for God. But apparently he did believe in God. But the thing is, he chose to have the praise, praise of men over the praise of God. He'd rather people praise him than praise God himself and make it to heaven. Because his mind was so warped and washed by all the things of the world that it, it, it just, it just, you know, it just calloused. It, it just basically blocked out God. He realized he acknowledged God, but he didn't care. So that's crazy. So that was one of the points. And then... Another point on this, uh, this scripture in Micah 5, 2, it says at the end, it says a uh, ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. That shows me that Jesus and God is the same because it says he was here from everlasting. Oh, there's a, there was only one. If I recall right <laughs> in the Bible, it says there's only one from everlasting. So we know that Jesus and God, yeah, they're the same thing. Praise God. A lot of times we feel like we can't connect with God because he's some big mystical person uh, being that's shaped that in a, some type of shape that I don't know. But we need to realize that God chose to robe himself in flesh and take on a shape, a, a permanent shape. And he will always look like Jesus so that now we can never say, God, you don't know what we went through. But Jesus came. He robed himself in flesh. He died on a cross. And he went through these pains that we went through. So now we can relate to him like never before. Praise God. Um, so Micah predicted this. Um, this, this, uh, this, you know, uh, you know, this time of him, or his arrival, of Christ's arrival, even before, you know what I'm saying, even before he was, you know what I'm saying, even centuries before he was born all right all right so uh now we're going to talk about uh well and let me mention this i want to just kind of touch on this too a little bit um he also talks about you know the bible it talks about how he was born in a manger he was born in like a in in a um he was born in a manger in a in a barn in like, like a in a feed box for livestock and and basically um it it, it kind of makes us think that you know uh why you know why did you know god could have been born anywhere god could have been born anywhere but god wanted to wanted everyone to know that he likes to get the glory out of places that you wouldn't think that he could get the glory out of God can take a mess and turn it to a message. He can take a mess, turn it to a masterpiece, whatever you want to call it. He can take a test. He can take your test and turn it to a triumph. He can take 
I'm telling you, God can, he can take your test, turn it to a testimony, a trial, to a triumph. Come on, y'all. God can do some great things. He can change our lives. Praise God. All right. So, um, you know, while Jesus was on his earthly journey, um, he started his ministry, uh, and it was, uh, I believe it was right after him coming out of the wilderness, his triumphal entry, um, where he, you know, of course he, he, he picked him out some disciples, um, the apostles, 12 apostles. Um, and he, he basically, they were, they were, um, they were fishermen and through Christ, he made them fishers of men. And, um, basically, uh, let me talk about the uh let me talk about the temptations of Christ for a second. Um so you had the temptations of Christ when he went into the wilderness. Um and that's where uh Satan tempted him. Satan took him on a high mountain and told him he said he said uh let me let me see um well he took him he took him on a high on a high mountain, I believe it was a high mountain, and he said, "Cast yourself down." If if uh, the Bible says your, his angels will give you charge, give, give charge over you, lest you dash your feet against a stone. He's like your angel. The angels will catch you and keep you from dying. Don't the Bible say that? This is Satan. Don't the Bible say that? Jesus, you can jump off of this this building. You can jump off this high pinnacle. And, 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 um, your, the angels will catch you. See, he's twisting the, he, he's using a little bit of Bible, but he's twisting it. And, and then that's when Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord God. And, well, he first said, it is written. Keep in mind, he said, it is written. You know what that, you know what that shows us? It shows us that we need to use the word of God to defeat our enemy, to defeat our enemies. So, if Jesus did it, 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 we can't just be like, well, that was a good concept that Jesus had. No, that's our God. He no, when he came for us to follow his example. So if he did it that way, we need to do it that same way. We need to tell Satan. We need to tell these 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 liars, these the, 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 you know, these enemies of our soul. We need to tell them it is written. Start quoting the word to them. Start remembering the word to keep us strong and grounded in God. So he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thou God. Um, and, and, and then he came and he, he, he showed him another scene. He, he showed him all of these, these kingdoms. And he said, I'll give you all these kingdoms of the world. If you bow down before me. And then that's when Jesus came back again. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord God and him alone shalt thou serve. And, and so then he came and I, and I know I'm not saying them in order, but then he came again and he was like, he was like, if you're the son of man, command that these stones should be made bread. If you're the son of God. And then that's when Jesus said, he said, it is written, uh, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. Come on, y'all. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. So he had the word of God to back him up so that he could be strong and grounded. And this is the example that we have to follow. And that's how powerful our Bibles really are. We need them. We need the words of God. And uh, also, and like I said, I'm kind of just going back and forth from different, different places on here. Um, when he was, uh, when Jesus was a, um, when he was uh, uh, basically a kid, you know, just to show, give you examples of Jesus and what he did and how amazing he did things. You know, another example was when he was a kid, it said that they traveled, I, uh, they traveled to the temple. They went to the temple. I don't know how far, well, yeah, it was, it was three days. It was a three days journey to get to the temple. They went to the temple and while they were there, um, it said that Jesus stayed there and Mary, basically Jesus' family left. And it said they were about a day's journey before they realized that Jesus was not there. 
Now, I, 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 I know that's, that's kind of weird because I feel like I would have, or, you know, if my kids weren't there, I would have known within the hour, but maybe it was a little different then. So, but uh, anyways, um, it was a, it was, like I said, it was a day before they realized that Jesus wasn't there. He was about 12 years old, somewhere around that time. And, and he was in the temple. So when they went back, they told him, they were like, yeah, they, they basically was like, you know, they, they, they were like, Jesus, we were looking all, all over for you. We didn't know you stayed here in the temple. We thought you, we, we, we left. We had to come back and get you. And that's when Jesus, he said, wished you not that I be about my father's business. See, he was, he was ready to get on it. He was ready to get on it. He was, he was ready to be about his father's business. And so, you know, Jesus, he grew mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually in favor with God and favor with men. And that's the same thing with us. God, when we have God on our sides, we're growing in all areas of life and we're getting favor of God and then also favor with, with, with people. Because if we got favor with God, we got favor with people. People respect us because they, they know we're real. And they're like, man, that's a real person. I know that if something goes down, that's who I need to come to. Uh, and, and that happens so many times. So many people, they they um, they wind up, uh, you know, losing a loved one or uh, their, their their life goes downhill. Who are they talk, talking to? They're calling a preacher. They're calling a brother and sister in Christ saying, I need you to pray for me. Why? Because they know you're real. All right, we're going to the next point. Um, Jesus teaches kingdom concepts. This is the last point right here, the last page uh, that I'm going to be talking talking about. And and uh, for anyone that don't know, I do this every other Friday. So um, I'm going through the New Testament right now. We just started doing the New Testament. And so um, for, you know, if y'all want to keep up with me on this, I'll be doing this every other Friday every other friday night and so uh this is so this is this is where we're at and this is my last page that I'll, I'll be talking tonight on so here we go jesus teaches kingdom concepts all right his miracles <clears throat> he taught so he did a lot of miracles we know that jesus did a lot of miracles he opened blind eyes in matthew 9 chapter 9 27 he 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 um he raised the the dead. He cast out demons. He, you know, and and I, I sort of talked about this earlier, but I, I told y'all I'd wait till right now to talk more about it. But he cast out demons, like you know, and you know the religious leaders of his time they couldn't keep up with him. That, that that's basically what I was saying earlier. They couldn't keep up with Jesus. In, in John twelve nineteen, it says, "The Pharisees said among themselves, Perceive ye how." You prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. See, they were frustrated because they're like, man, everybody's following Jesus now. We can't even get nobody in the temple. We can't even get people to, 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 to come our way, hear us, do this, do that. Nah, they're following after Jesus now. So they got jealous. And see, they couldn't compete with these miracles that he was doing. They couldn't compete with it. He was healing people. Blind eyes open. People demons cast out and they try to try their best to pull him down find him in a in 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 some uh uh trap you know trap him try to twist his words on him it didn't work it didn't work <laughs> praise god and so he 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 went to raise he he you know he, he raised people from the dead like in 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 um in John chapter 11 it said uh it said he uh, in John chapter 11, 11 verse 41, he went to lay, uh, raise Lazarus from the dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus jumped up and he was still in his he was still in his uh, in his grave clothes. That's that, you know, that's where they get that song from. He was in his grave clothes and 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 uh, they had a he, he told uh, uh, he told some people to loose him. And, and and let him freely he's back alive and they didn't believe it his his um his uh, uh mary and martha i think it was they that they, they martha was like if you would have came sooner uh, uh uh 
uh, Lazarus wouldn't have died, but now it's already been, this is the fourth day, Jesus. He's done. He's long gone. And then, and then, and then he's like, bring him. Let me go see him. And they're like, no, his body's going to be stinking by now. And then Jesus like, look, roll the stone back. And, and so he says, Lazarus come forth and boom, you got a dead man raised back to life again. Bow. That's how amazing God. That, that's, and, and, and Jesus also said, he said, greater work shall we do than these because he, 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 he goes to his father. And he gave us this power to do it. Praise God. And another time, um, there was a, uh, there was a lady that died and the family, you know, was crying. They were sad because she died. And there was a lot of family in the house. And when he came in, he said, she ain't dead, but she just sleeps. And it said that the people, some of the people laughed him to scorn. They, they laughed, they laughed, they basically laughed laughed at him and and um he basically told them people to leave out the house and then when he went in and he 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 basically told the maid to rise and commanded her to commanded the family to give her something to eat and she was good to go that's what type of god we serve and it said and the bible also says in mark 16 16 uh basically um these signs shall follow them that believe uh, uh, we'll lay our hands upon the sick and, 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 and they shall recover and so forth. All these things that take place. Why? Because we got God on our side and he's, we're, we're getting this power from Christ. Don't like, I'll say it again. We're getting this power from Christ. It's amazing. We have power in Christ. When we're in Christ, it's nothing but the, we're, we're surrounded by the miraculous all the way around. Praise God. He multiplied loaves and fish. He, he, he took this boy, this lad's lunch box that just had, had, um, five loaves and two fish. This, this boy, he had a little lunch box and he took it and fed 5,000. And that was just, that was just the men. It said, besides, uh, 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 women and children. So there ain't no telling how many people was there that he fed with a boy's lunch box. And here's the, here's the interesting part. After he fed them, and this is in Matthew chapter 14, after he fed them, it said that when he, when they took up the fragments, the, the, the food that was left, it said it was enough to fill 12 baskets full. Whoa, whoa, what, what just happened? What just happened? This, that God, Jesus took a lunch, a boy's lunch box and multiplied it to feed 5,000 with 12 baskets full of food left. We serve a mighty God. Here's the, here's the question that you need to ask. You know, here's the question that you need to ask. What'd that boy do when he took that one of those baskets home to him and, and showed it, you know, dropped it at his mom's feet and he said, Mom, look at this right here. And she said, Whoa, where'd you get all that food from? Son, this is enough to, to keep us good for a month or two months. And then he says, Mom, this was the food that came out of my lunchbox. Jesus multiplied it. Whoa, that's how great God is. We serve a mighty God. All right, so um, um, Matthew, uh, let's talk about his parables. Jesus, he spoke in parables, right? He spoke in parables. And um, w these parables that he spoke in, um, they were for a reason. There was many reasons that he spoke in parables, but I want to pinpoint one of the reasons that always stood out to me. It was the fact that, um, uh, you know, the Pharisees, they were around a lot of times, religious leaders of that time, they were around listening to him. And, and he would say these mir uh, uh, parables and he knew that, that if you wouldn't really wanting to live, wanting to live for God, then you wouldn't care to decipher those parable parables, de de decode those parables. You wouldn't want to dig in and figure out what he's saying, but you'd be like, what's he talking about? This dude's crazy. Let's get out of here. And that's why he spoke in parables. The, in Matthew 13, 13, it says, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they, under, neither do they understand. What's that mean? <laughs> they, 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 don't, they, they, they don't care. They don't care. They're like, I, if Jesus don't, they're, they're like, I don't care about this. So Jesus is like, I'm gonna, it's, all right, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to you all in parables. I'm going to talk to you all in parables. Man, don't get me started. Ooh, because the, 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 the awesome thing about it is, 
<laughs> next time somebody you know you 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 here's the here's the here's the uh the moment of truth right here the the the, the test right here you start talking to somebody in some some and and maybe maybe there's something a good something you know about and you start talking to them about the, the using these high words or something just to see if they're going to hang in with you and you know if they really want to know about what you're talking about because that's basically what Jesus did in Matthew 13:13 13, 13. that's why he talks in parables he wants to know if you really want it you want it you want this kingdom then you're going to understand you're going to decipher you're going to break down you're going to you're going to dig till you figure out what I'm saying and that's what he wanted people to do. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, in Matthew 18, he talks about the lost sheep. Um, basically, he said, he said, what, what, what real shepherd? Well, well he says, basically he says, if you're, if, he said, I'm, I'm the shepherd. I'm, I'm the shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. And so he said, if, uh, he he said basically if one of the uh, 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 sheep run away, what's a real shepherd gonna do? He's gonna leave the ninety nine. He's gonna he knows the ninety nine are good. He's gonna go after that one shepherd. Say uh say a wolf, you know, took the, the I mean I said shepherd, but the sheep. Say a wolf went after I mean took the sheep, and Jesus he's like no nah, that 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 that. That sheep's gonna be okay, cause I'm I'm on that wolf's hills. I'm gonna get that boy. I'm gonna get that boy. I'm gonna get that sheep back. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that girl back. I'm gonna get my my daughter. I'm gonna get my son back. I ain't gonna leave you. I ain't gonna leave you there. And think about that. Think about the prodigal son. You know, um, you know Jesus. He showed love. He's showing love. The prodigal son said, "Man, I got it better than this." When he went out doing his own thing, he's like, "Man, I got it better." At my father's house, I need to go back to my father. Even if I'm a servant at my father's house, it's better than eat, you know, eating this pig food. Man, I, I, I've gotten low. I squandered all my money, and and I need to get back with Christ. And and you know, so um, um, you know, Jesus, he said, even so, it is not the will of your father that one of these little ones should perish. So he, he, Jesus cares about us. He wanted. He won't. He he he's he's for us and not against us he's for us and not against us you know some di disciples they said that uh they they told jesus they said jesus man we seen some people that was um basically you know uh, uh i can't basically talking about christ we seen some people talking about you you know pro preaching and stuff jesus and we we kind of rebuked them jesus because we were like we were like if y'all were going to be doing that, y'all need to be with us. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. No, if they're doing stuff for me, then no, we're for, we're for them. So don't, don't, don't rebuke them uh, to, you know, show them, show them respect. Tell them, keep on, keep on going. And, um, so that's what, that's what Jesus, that's, this was, this is Jesus's concepts of how he thought and how he wanted us to think and treat people. He turned water into wine and, and, so many miracles that he did um uh let's see um i got let's see uh you know let's talk about the sower in matthew 13 um jesus let, let's see jesus he said that um in matthew 13 he talks about the sower and he said for whosoever has more well, this was this was around that same point. He was like, "For whosoever has more will be given, and for those that have not, even what they have shall be taken away." So, basically, um, basically, you know, if if you're not using what you got to the kingdom of God, then what you have will be taken away from you because you know the sower was. The, the the one that, that you had some people that 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 uh sold their seed on uh on um uh, among thorns and 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 the thorns choked the seed out and then some sold their seed among stony ground where when it sprung up fast but it didn't have enough soil to keep it so it died and 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 basically um he was saying that uh those that that 
that have more will be given to them and those that don't have even what they have will be taken away now that's amazing there's something that always kind of stood out to me on that and it's this it's like when you're i'm, I'm just being real I'm, I'm 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 just gonna call it out out for what it really is and it's like when you're um living for god you're 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 basically because the bible talks about this god takes takes what the enemy the little bit that the enemy has and adds it to you so so basically um i i, I like to use this concept you got the you got you got a man that's not living for god and he's he worked twice as hard building a he's building his own house he's got the brick and mortar and he's building his house He's worked twice as hard as this man right here, the man of God, that's got his house completely built. This man on the left right here is, is looking over here and he's like, man, I started way before this dude. He's already got his house up and I'm over here struggling to get mine up. I don't know what's going on. But what, what's going on is every night God's snatching one of his bricks and adding it to God's adding it it's adding it, adding it to this man right here to his house come on that's what he's saying right here he's taken away from because see he's saying god he's saying wake up if you don't have me you don't have nothing if you don't have me then then you, then you're gonna lose you're not gonna get that he wants us to wake up we can't do it without god god's like look i'm telling you you need me i'm telling you you need me praise god um <clears throat> so uh and uh you're welcome sister Deanna. i see that you saying thank you and um i appreciate all of y'all's uh comments on here um and god is great uh judith praise god god is great um so uh i'm i'm kind of wrapping this up i appreciate everyone that's been on here um and i'll just stop from here and I pray that this right here encourages y'all. And uh, I I know God's doing great things. And I just, I, I love what God's doing. And I just, I, 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 I you know what? I want to end this one in a prayer. That's kind of what I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to just say this prayer right here. And we're going to end it like that. And we'll be done with that. And I appreciate everyone that's on here. And that, that will be on here anytime. God. Thank you, Lord, for every person that you brought on here for this Bible study tonight. I pray that you work on every one of us, God. I pray that you heal our broken hearts. I pray that you mend our lives together. I pray that you show us that you is what we have that, that that's going to make the difference. God, keep on leading us. Keep guiding us. Keep strengthening us. Keep encouraging us. Keep showing us what you want us to see. And help us to see that, God, you're going to make a way. That you're going to do something. That you're not going to leave us down, but you're going to pull us up. And help us to lean on you. And whatever problems we have, anybody that comes on here and hears this prayer, God, I pray that you help them in their situation, God. And I believe, God, that you're going to pull them out of it. And in the name of Jesus, I ask and say all of this. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, that about wraps it up. I appreciate all of y'all that was on here. And may y'all have a blessed weekend, a blessed night. In Jesus' name.